Uh, no, wait, that didn't go to everybody. I so when you, if I click on the chat, does that let me see everybody too? Because I can't see everybody. Yeah, you too. can you can just, just hit the chat and you'll get okay. the roll. Yep. Okay, cool. Amber from Texas, South Wales, New York. Oh, Barb Hexback. Hi, Barb. Uh, Catherine McClure. Some of these names are starting to look really familiar. <laughs> well, yay. That's because it, I'm like, everybody wants to listen to you. I'm like, you're awesome. Yeah. And, uh, but it's great. And so, we, you know, we picked up somebody from uh, Australia, Carleen from Australia and Joe Douglas from Australia. That's awesome. So the, the evening ones, we get the Australians. The afternoon ones, I get the Europeans. I, there's no way to get everybody on one call. It's just not possible. But um, that's why I kind of move them around a little bit. Oh, there's Fran. Fran. Fran's one of my peeps. Hi, Fran. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> yes. I, I didn't know how to do that before. Okay. Well, <laughs> with Ida, I stick to this, too, so. this time because um, Ida works during the day. So certain people, their time is because they have limitations. But I do like, like Sharon Wilsey tomorrow. She's at one o'clock. Um, and she, Sharon's been great. We've had, we've had a fabulous time. Um, it's, uh, they've all been really, really great. And um, all the webinars are on my Surefoot Equine YouTube channel. If you missed any of them, just go and subscribe to Surefoot Equine. That's where I put up all these videos. Um, and I put out the email once a week. If you want to get the emails ahead of time so that you know who the guests are for the week, just join my email list. It, go to murdochmethod.com and join the email list. Um, and then at the bottom of the list, I put links to all of the previous webinars individually, in addition to the fact that you can go to the Surefoot Equine page. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Joe Watman, she's from Australia too, from down under. All righty, so tonight we have Ida Hammer once again. I'm thrilled to have you back. Um, for, is there, I don't know, in case there's people here coming on that don't know you, Ida, how about just giving us a little brief bio? Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm glad that you're hanging out with us tonight. And um, so Wendy and I have gotten to be fortunate enough to get to work together here for quite a bit for the last uh, year and a half or so. Um, I'm, a, I'm a whole horse practitioner and an educator. I have graduate uh, certification program for people that are interested in learning how to trim the, the feet, but doing it by using the whole horse method as far as like everything is included in everything. So I got... Um, connected with Wendy um, in person. Finally, we like we got the chit chat quite a while ago, but not in person. But we got connected in uh, Tennessee last year, and um, my people that trim that are certified with me are as in love with the surefoot pads as I am, and um, it blew me away. So if you had didn't know me from before, I'm like I was a skeptic. You know, I like I had Wendy's pads at an earlier date. And, you know, I'm like, this is nonsense and blah, blah, blah. And, and so I actually sent them back. Somebody loaned them to me. And then when I got to actually um, actually use them and try them without being a bullheaded self, it blew me away. So we took them uh, at the time that I got the pads. We had went to several states to teach a hoof care. And we were using them on every kind of horse in every kind of situation. And there was not one horse that did not have a, a response, a positive response to it. So it just got more exciting and more exciting. So um, everything that I do and teach, I bring to my students and my students are of the same mind as I am, as far as like, we want to include the whole horse and what we do and how can we improve them and how can we make them happier and better. So, um, so I, uh, Wendy was kind enough to come and do a, a practitioner's clinic um, for my people last year in October. And um, I think I, I've got a list that I'll show you guys later tonight, but I think I got a list of everybody from throughout different states that that really joined in on this and all these guys are using the the surefoot pads regularly with not only not only does it help with our trimming but it like it helps enhance our trimming plus it helps the horses in many other ways so it's just all of us like are loving it so I apologize in advance to any of the pictures I didn't get of from my practitioners but they were all jumping in to show to send this stuff tonight oh, to look at awesome. so it was fun yeah, and uh, you know, I just since I talked to you last, I had Dr. Sherry Johnson on, and she's the veterinarian out at uh, Colorado State University, and she was she talked about how they use the surefoot pads in rehab, and I had Felicitas who talked about how to use surefoot pads for dressage training, and you know, it's just it's um, so much fun to hear about it from all these different angles. Um, yes. 
And of course, with Bob Belker, we never got to talk about Surefoot because we spent four hours with Bob just talking about the foot. But yes, yes. They, he's such a fabulous guy. And I'm going to have to see if I can get him to come back out again for another yeah. one, because I think we've only scratched the surface. So for those of you listening, what I'm trying to do is give you a lot of different perspectives on just the horse itself, the, the function. And what I've realized is I've kind of missed teeth. So I asked Ida if, uh, about her, her um, teeth person, um, Al, no, not Al. Ashley. Ashley. Ashley Green. Um, mm -hmm. And we're, we're negotiating right now about um, having her come on, but because we've talked about feet, we've talked about training, we've talked about rehab. You know, we continue to talk about feet because th this is what we're putting on the pads. Um, and there's so much information that you can gain there. So um, if you have any suggestions on people or an aspect that you'd like me to see if I can find a guest, just go ahead and pop me an email. It's probably best because if it's in the chat, I'll forget about it. But just pop me an email at wendy at wendymurdoch.com and I'll see what I can do because um, I'm just going to keep doing these webinars until I'm not stuck at home anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's probably good that you're stuck at home for a little bit. We just like get you stop for a second and I'm like, and we all get to enjoy you more. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's been so much fun. So what are we going to talk about tonight, Ida? So what I'm going to talk about tonight is um, a lot of my students, like I said, I have uh, about 100 graduates throughout the U.S. and the U.K. and, um, and some in um, uh, Johannesburg. But um, what, with the, the group that came, they're not all of them have, didn't get to make it to the practitioner clinic, but they're, they're often using the pads on a regular basis. Yep. So what they did tonight is um, they had, I had actually had them send me some examples and what they're using on them for and I'm like, and so I can share with you guys. So some of the stuff that they're, they're using and what they're seeing and the variety, the wide variety of what's, what's happening. I see um, Martina raised her hand. I'm like, and I know that you had emailed me a question from her. So should I answer that now or? Um, is it, a, it, does it fit now? Um, it can fit now. I'm like, so uh, just don't let me go on. I, I will add it in a bit, but I'm like, okay. don't let me forget to answer that. So, okay, cause so. I put it up, I, I pulled it up on my phone so that I've got that question there to make sure that we answer it. Okay. So let me, I'm going to go to share screen here for a minute so I can start talking about, um, so I use these on a regular basis. Tonight is a lot about for me to share what my people are doing with them. I'm like, I do a lot of the same things. I'm like, and we talked about that a little bit at the last uh, webinar Zoom meeting that we did. But tonight, I'm like, uh, so this is this spreads out throughout the country what, what my practitioners are doing with them, and just how much that it's just it's just amazingly good. So, well, I, I'm yeah, I, I can. I, you know that that's one of the things when I first started Surefoot. Go ahead and share your screen. I'll just yak for a minute. Okay. When I first started Surefoot, the biggest question I had was, was the change due to my skill and my training, or was this something that anyone could do? And you know what we obviously discovered is this is something anybody can do that knows how to safely pick up a hoof. And given whatever direction you're coming from, you can employ the Surefoot pads in your work, in your training, just to make your horse more comfortable in rehab. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see how your, um, how your peeps have been using it in different ways. This is awesome. They're using it in so many cool ways. Let me, uh, I'm just going to bring this one up first. So it take a couple seconds before it comes up. But this is uh, one of my students, Lisa Parlier, sent this one in for what she's using and offering the horse. And if you notice, I'm like, the one important thing that Wendy has uh, stressed to us, and this is what we all stress to everybody, because human nature wants to dictate what, um, we, we see a horse and we think, oh, this horse has got this wrong, so this is what we want, like, we're gonna offer this pad under this foot, and that's what we're gonna do. Well, that's not how it works. So um, the horses kind of decide, and it's cool how they pick and choose, because this horse, if you notice, he's got DSLD on his left hind on this horse, and so he chose the hard firm pad on the right hind and he chose the medium slant on the left. And um, so, so this is a DSLD horse. And if you, no, for you guys, say what DSLD is, is for those that don't know. Yep. So DSLD is a degenerative suspensory ligament desmitis. So lots of horses can get a suspensory desmitis where they have a suspensory injury but a DSLD horse has a degenerative condition that will continue to get worse. There is no cure for it and it will just continue to get worse. So we use these I'm like, on horses that have that and we let them search it out because they know how their suspensory ligament feels better than we do. 
So it can make and break the difference of when like we go to trim. So oftentimes we'll ask like when we're doing this kind of stuff, we'll like if we've got two horses to trim, like the one horse will go ahead and see what they want to do with pads. And then he like he's standing there waiting his turn. So he's kind of like he's getting his purple receptors fired up his intrinsic muscles are getting fired. And so then when we get ready to trim, um, he'll stay on the pads if he chooses to when we go to trim. And then it's usually like I haven't yet seen one be less comfortable after we've done it. They're usually uh, something's relaxing and, and better all the time. So so this is this is Lisa Parlier's uh, um, a trim horse that she's doing in Illinois. So this is a DSLD horse. And so using it before you trim and just sort of in a way kind of warming them up to be ready to be trimmed. Exactly. Because what it does is, um, so the biggest thing, and I love everything about the pads, but the biggest thing for all of us that we notice is first of all, is it it helps it helps ready the horse fire its appropriate receptors so if you have a horse in his case so he's got his left his left hind is his weak leg so if we just go and start trimming this horse like of course he's going to have problems just standing still or trying to be good especially when you're on like anything that's going to cause him to wait the left hind so if we let him start firing his intrinsic muscles like and so in and of itself it's not going to correct the 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 desmitis on a suspensory ligament but if he can fire the muscles that help support it and surround it, it makes him a happier, more comfortable, more, more relaxed horse for us to start working. And with us, we, the, if he wants the pads on while we're trimming, that's not a problem. And if he doesn't, I'm like, they'll kick them out. I'm like, we've seen yeah. all that. So they'll just, they'll get rid of them. So it just helps them from, from the start to finish. Plus it's kind of cool because like horses will get to the point so it's a huge thing with me and the way um, like I work with my students and my students feel this way too, but uh, it should be where the horse looks forward to seeing us. So if it's not, it shouldn't be just like, oh God, here they come, they turn my feet again. It should be like they see us and they're like they're, they almost start looking at chewing the second they see us because it, good things are gonna happen. That's the way it should be. I'm like, I can't swear that everybody's gonna do that, but I'm like the people I work closely with do. Awesome. So let me go to the next slide. So I gotta, I gotta make it small for a minute to see which one this is because okay. I've got like my notes that I make. I made a note for tonight. Yeah. And I'm trying to find it. So I made a note specific for tonight. <laughs> yes, yes. So on this guy, I'm like, this is, um, I think this is the same horse. It's just a different view because now he's choosing, see how he's choosing, he changed his, uh, his his choice right he's on a he's on a different pad for the left hind still on the hard pad for the right hind okay so i lost that yeah. note i was going to ask you but i'll find it um so somebody asked and i'm just going to throw this in here while i'm while i've got it up uh come on chat come back here do, do, do. hang on um somebody said they have a horse that has uh pedal ice i, I Pedal osteitis. Yes. Um, and they're wondering what pad would be the best for that. So always, I'm like, I always talk to people because it's always up to the horse, as you know. But um, if I can only get one pad for those guys, if, I, if you're going to just pick one pad, the physio pad would be, is always my first choice if that's going to be the only pad I can get. The thing with pedal osteitis horses is, um, so the, 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 the circumflexal border of their hoof is is a little bit demineralized, and so they when they stand on something, usually they're going to pick something that's not as stiff as the hard one, but it's going to be dependent up to them. So the physio pad works good because it's it's um it's not as thick, and it has two sides to it, so it does it gives a little bit more than the the actual hard pad like this horse is standing on. Right, and you can flip and, um, it over to have a half inch. So basically what we see on the screen here is a hard pad, which is two inches and a medium pad, which is two inches. And the physio yes. pad is an inch of the hard, inch of the orange pad and a half inch of the medium pad, which is gray in that particular pad. So you kind of get that combination in one pad. Yes, and so that would be my, like that would be my go-to pad until the horse told me something different right. for a pedo osteitis because as a rule, they're not, and, and, and again, I'm like, it's always up to the horse, but um, most of those won't, 
the, most of those won't choose the orange pad that's in this one. That's not to say that the individual won't, but they usually right. like something a little bit more giving, but not so giving as what's on the left hind on this one. Right. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with the yes. pad. Yes, and I, I'll tell people all the time when when they ask, which pad should I get? And I always send them to your website first and have them like watch your YouTube videos about the how-tos. But I'll tell them if they can only get one pad, I would get the physio pad because that gives you just a little bit more variety. And I know now, like I've got the whole physio pad, which I love it. But then um, shortly after that, you started having the half physio pads. Yeah. So I kind of suggest that because... Um, because that way they could they, they can do two things because the whole physio pad if the horse wants to set both front feet on it they will but sometimes it's easier if they can have a position where they don't have to have their feet dictated to them where they have to have both feet on that pad so i like in a, in a certain area or right. you could use it on a front and a back or two separate ones so yeah, if you had two so I, I, like i love the, yes i love those yeah and um, and so we've been uh, speaking of physio pads, and after what we saw you did with uh, Dr. Deb, um, we have taken our comfort x-ray block, sliced up a half physio pad, glued it to the top of the block, and sent it off to a couple of vets to take x-rays. Um, and I think I sent you the pictures from that. So um, yes, yes. I'm so excited about that. And so I've been in contact with Dr. Deb again, and like we've got new stuff that they that she did, and I'm like with the Surefoots, I'm so excited about it because um, I don't have any of the um, documentation for that yet, but we'll be doing that again. Oh, cool. But she um she did they were doing a horse with um with the Surefoot pads, and the horse they just let it kind of settle, and I'm like, and they did different pictures. I'm like, so I'm like, I've got the she she told me about the series of pictures that they did. And um, what they found out was like they did uh, before, like the, the horse on hard ground, horse on um, the physio pad, and, and then the horse on uh, in the formal hoof. And the horse actually actually chose the angle that he wanted, and he when he relaxed on the pad, and then when they poured him into the formal hoof, I'm like it actually mimicked the I'm like because when you when we're doing the formal hoof, if you follow the foot, it kind of mimics what the horse already wants or it can if you listen. And so the horse actually picked the same exact angle um, on the on the pad where he held his foot as they the, the, the finished product of the formal hook. Wow. And it was I mean it's, it's crazy stuff. It's you know like that's what I said to everybody in the beginning. Like in the beginning I was like I was a skeptic, but you know we're we're documenting things. That's the cool part about all my students. I'm like they're documenting things, and um, we're seeing real results. That's so fabulous. You know, I sent um, I sent you a pair, and I sent Dr. Taylor a pair of um, three inch uh, hard pads. We, you know, we get leftovers sometimes, and I sit there looking at the box, wondering what the you know what I'm going to do with them. And then something happens, and it's like, oh, that's I'm going to try it. So she's experimenting with those. I haven't talked to her yet about it. I'm excited about those, and I haven't got a chance to do anything with it yet. But I'm like, so I'm like, so when I got those, I was like, hmm. And I told you I was me playing with it. So. One of the first things, so just just so that um, you guys know what we're talking about, the pad that's on this horse, the orange pad, um, Wendy sent me one like this, but it's three inches tall instead of um, just two inches tall. And so I was thinking about that, and I'm like, what kind of like what kind of things can we do with that? So one of the things I was thinking about, and I haven't I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. But <clears throat> some horses that um, so some horses that are a bit gassy or like they might have like a gassy colic. I'm like, if you, if you have them step up on a platform, sometimes that actually helps or really like, I, and I'm not, this is not, I'm not a vet. So I'm just saying, I've seen this with horses that when we put up on that, like a little platform and let them put their front feet up there, I'm like, they can, it kind of helps, helps them stretch their diaphragm just a little bit. And I'm like, and, and like, it's just gas, it helps them pass gas. So um, horses that like seem to have a tighter diaphragm, I'm, that's why I want to really hit those with because it's a higher lift. And so you could actually put them up there that could uh, improve their proprioception and maybe lift them up. And like, and so it gives them a rise in their diaphragm for a minute. And um, uh, Molly, uh, one of my trimmers that um, she does a surefoot pad too. She keeps her, she's got a half her pony, um, uh, Welch pony mix. And uh, so sometimes she gets kind of like where she eats too fast as a pony does. And like it relieves her greatly if you just like have her step up on a pedestal or something. So he'll, she'll have her front feet up there. And she'll kind of like lean back and it's just like us getting a good stretch, but they get a stretch. So instantly I started thinking about those three inch pads. I'm like, so I'm like between um, actually 
uh, stimulating their proprioceptors and their intrinsic muscles, but giving them the lift um, of a firm lift. I was thinking that those are the kind of horses I can't wait to try on those. <laughs> I love sending stuff to you because I never know what you're going to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about that because I was thinking because there's a lot of horses I'm like especially like horses so a lot of the horses I work on and I'll go back to uh, I do have on the video of the one that we did at your clinic the one he um the he's a little um spotted saddle horse yep. not little he's tall but it, his, he had a lot of issues in his past before the new owners got him and really gave him a good life but um, he has, uh, for him, he's got so much fascia that's so tight and so, uh, he's just so tight. And for him, I'm like, he relaxed on the physio pad, but horses like that, that like in their girth area, they're so tight. And if they have a chance to just, even horses that have um, really tight tendons and you can get them up uh, someplace where it relieves some of the, just some of that and fires or proprioception, I think we could do a lot of cool stuff. Cool. All right, so we've had a okay, question, and maybe this fits in here. Um, the person's asking, in situations where you are remodeling an NPA hoof, I'm not sure what an NPA hoof is. A negative palmar angle or a negative plantar angle. So like that would mean that the coughing bone is, uh, yes. Yep, have you found the slant heads help in determining how to trim the foot that day? It's crazy because um, some of the, so I, we've used these a lot on the negative uh, plantar or palmar angles. And it's crazy because the horses choose. So like some of the horses actually give themselves a, a heel angle. Like they'll, they'll step on the edge of the pad and like and give themselves a heel angle if it's not a wedge. And some of them, as crazy as it sounds, will actually, they'll prefer like the, the medium pad and just let their foot sink in there and just like, and stretch. So it really depends on the horse and the condition, but we've had positive areas for that um, as far as what they're doing. And it actually, um, after that they settle like with that, so on those horses, we use them before and we use them after because when they, they stretch before and then we do it after, I'm like, it helps them settle too. So it doesn't always help us to decide the angle, but it can loosen things up to make um, the foot look different and feel different. Cool. I hope that answered the question. But I'm like, yeah. we use them a lot to do that. But the horse is always kind of telling us stuff with it. Yeah, they they can mess mess around with it and make different choices even when you offer it the way you think they should like it. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I find cool about the pads too. I'm like, I could go on. I need to go through more pictures for you guys. But, yeah, let's do another picture. Um, so. Okay. While you're talking, you can talk so, and, do, and do another picture because you have become uh, adept at Zoom here. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because you keep helping me. I'm like, the first time you guys, I tried to do a Zoom meeting, I'm like, when you had to hold my hand, I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> hey, you know, hey. at least I'm not having to hold my phone up for pictures this time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, so this is a horse, um, Lizzie Kilgore's the trimmer on this horse in Texas. And um, so this horse was super tight and, uh, so she offered the, 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 the sure foot pads and like, like, this is what, this is the horse can't wait. I mean, he can't wait for trim day. So he just relaxing. So this is the, so for of you that don't have the physio pad. So this is the, the softer side of the physio pad when you flip it over. Yep. Half so inch this, medium, that gray. Yep. This is a big old quarter horse. So <laughs> this one, I'm like, this is Natalie Zielinski's uh, horse that she's trimming in Wisconsin. I was cracking up about this one because this is when all the lockdown started happening and all the shelter in place. So Natalie sent this picture. I'm like, and you look at this horse. I'm like, it just cracks me up. He's like having the best day getting his feet done. And so Nat Natalie, I think her, her I, I might be misquoting it. So I apologize if, you're, if I did, Natalie. But she said something like, um, shelter in place, physio pads, horse relax, nobody, no holder, no problem, because it was just her and the horse. And, and so she's like, it's all easy peasy. You can see how alarmed he is and everything, just hanging out with her while he's getting his pedicure. So I thought that was pretty cute. And then, uh, so this one, let's see, this one is from Carla Peters in Wisconsin. So this is a cool, I think I got two pictures of this horse. Let me look, let's see if I get this one. next one. Yes. So see this. So Carla said, 
this horse had so much discomfort. Um, I think she said her right front foot when she was went to trim her. It might have been her left, so I have to look at my notes. I'm bad. I'm still not good enough to have notes available while I'm looking at this. But okay. um, so Carla, Carla worked on this horse, and she said she was so uncomfortable both physically and mentally. She just the horse was like spent. So she put her on the physio pad, and so the horse started sniffing the physio pad, and then she went. She was doing. She was standing on it. She chose to stand on this. And she just relaxed. And then by the time Carla went to trim her, then the horse, uh, this was her state of mind. And like, and she was, she was between pain and anxiousness or anxiety. She was really a, kind of a hard, not hard to trim, but she was just not having the best day until after she got to relax on the pad. So th this is, might be a good time for this question. Um, if a horse is reluctant to pick up the front foot for trimming because they don't like to put much weight on the hinds, would you offer the pad on the hinds before a trim? And for a similar horse, would you put a pad on the weighted front foot while trimming the unweighted foot? So, so yes, sometimes like well, it depends because we can start kind of seeing the horse if you're like wanting to pick up a foot and you can kind of like for us when we pick up a foot, we're working on the foot that we're picking up, but we're also uh, scanning the area for what his muscles are doing for where he's standing. And so if you pick up, like on this particular horse, if you put, went to pick up the left front and you notice that when you went to pick that up, he might be reluctant, but but maybe if you look over at the diagonal right hind, I mean, they might not be putting weight on that. And some horses that have hot pain are like that. They won't like, they won't pick, they don't want to pick up the diagonal because they had to put too much weight on the, the the, the diagonal hind so it's always up to the horse and so all of all of the trimmers that came to to your class and we went through you know the proper ways to um, ask horses to to pick up their feet and and to put the pads underneath and all those kind of things all the people that came to those class um, right, they go to offer to the horse what what it is and and what so if if so say that we suspect that we want to pick up the left front and we suspect that the horse is, it's the right front that he doesn't want to stand on. So we might offer him the pad on the right front and then maybe the horse will stand on the right front and still doesn't want to pick up the left. So I'm like, that's a clear indication. So most of my people have more than one pad, but if we only have one pad, we would actually just ask, we'll just ask the horse on every foot and tell it like, for us, I'm like, and some of the people, some some trimmers don't like to take the time to just take a few seconds to see what the horse needs to get comfortable. I'm like I'd have to. I'm like I can't give enough kudos to my people because um they like they it's for the horse. I'm like we all do this because of the horse. So we'll just take you know, it. doesn't take more than five minutes just to ask the horse's opinion about what they want. And then I'm like it just makes our life easier and it makes their like I said they look forward to seeing it. So I'm like they don't they don't go oh god oh no, here comes the trimmer they're excited. And, and like, as you say start. five minutes up front can save you an hour behind. Oh big time big time and and like so why would anybody want to put a horse through stressful situations for nothing? And why would we want to do that to our bodies? Because I'm like yeah. five minutes five minutes of hanging out with a horse and being easy, or an hour like having them beat you up because they're just not comfortable. Like it's no brainer for all of us. It's like, you know. So way back when, and I can't even, when we first came out with the physio pads, um, Brad and I were at a trade show um, and there was a man there named Jeff Stubblefield and he's been shoeing horses for, oh, it was 45 years then. Um, and so he got a physio pad and he did a little quote that's on my YouTube channel on Murdoch Method. He called me up this weekend and he thanked me again for that pad. He says he shoes yes. about 6,000 horses a year. He's in Tennessee and trail horses, show horses, all kinds of horses. And, and I mean, he's an, and he's an older gentleman, um, nice as the day is long, but he, I, he could not say enough nice things about how much the pad had made his life and the horse's lives easier. So, you know, for anybody who's Pray. wondering, you know, about, other people that are using this professionals and shoers absolutely um they're finding it's making their life easier so anyway if, if they say they're if they say it's not i'm like then they're not truly listening because so like it's not just me it's like oh, i've got we've got people all over the country and for every kind of situation and there's not one person that hasn't made it easier on yeah so so somebody's asked just if there's a starting protocol um and basically, I'll just, I'll answer that real quick. 
Um, the protocol is you offer the pad to the horse and you pick up a foot and you put the horse's foot on the pad. And if he steps off of that pad, you go see if he wants it on another foot. If he won't pick up the leg, you go see if it, there's another foot that he'd prefer it. And once they realize you're listening, they will totally tell you what they want. They do. They do. Like at first in the beginning, when I tell people, when they ask me that kind of stuff, I'm like, it depends what the horse says. And they look at me like I have two heads. I'm like, seriously, they're going to tell us. And when they see the horse, they're like, oh, you're, you're serious. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me get to another one here. Yeah. This is awesome. So, so um, for anybody who's wondering, I'm, um, I'm going to do a Zoom webinar on um, becoming a Surefoot practitioner. I've had a lot of people asking me that question and um, it's a little tricky right now since we're at stay at home orders and we can't get together in groups. But um, I was thinking I could go through at least some of the lecture part online to, so that you know when we did get together, that part would be under your belt. So um, just stay tuned for that. I don't have it scheduled yet, but um, in case that thought has come up about how do you become a Surefoot practitioner, just watch the Zoom meetings and we'll schedule something for that. That's going to be cool. People are like, I know like a bunch of my people more wanted to get involved with that. And then when they had a shelter in place and like everything kind of all the wheels like ee, just kind yeah, of stopped. We had, we had several scheduled for this spring. I think I had three or four. So anyway, we'll get back there. Yes. And we know it. Thank you. We know you will. Yep. So this horse is, uh, this is one of Carla Peters' horse uh, trim, trim clients also. He's a stifled horse. He's got bad stifles on both, both hinds. And so uh, this is how uh, he wanted to choose. This is what he chose to stand on. And you'll notice his face. And so they just like, they let them relax and get comfortable before we even try to start trimming them. We don't just grab them and like, like that's a pet peeve of mine anyway, is just a, like, no introduction to the horse, no anything, and just grab their leg and start trimming. I'm like, no, no one more, no, hope. that's just wrong. So like, so he's just prepping for his pedicure and um, he chose to put that on that foot for his stifles. I'm like, and was just chilling like a villain. That's awesome. You know, I get a lot of questions about shivers and um, have you worked with any horses that have shivers and the, use the pads? Um, shivers and PSSM, yes. Um, I, so they're not the same thing, but like one's a worse advanced, uh, worse, worse symptomatic as the, uh, than the other. And yes, and most of the time they'll pick the shiver leg. The, like if they've got one particular leg that comes up and is doing a lot of shaking, most of the time they'll pick that leg. But most of the time they'll want a firmer pad with that leg. They won't like, so they want something that's not super soft. Okay, more but, like a physio or a hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but they, I, yeah, like it's crazy. And I'm like, and shivers, I don't know all the ins and outs of shivers, but I don't think um, anybody I think really does. That, no, they don't. I'm like, there's lots of research, but it's a lot of it's incon inconclusive. But um, what I find is they, they, I still think this is my opinion, of course. So like, I, this is not, I haven't read some research paper of this, but I think it helps them. Uh, I hope that, I think it helps them find the proper receptors in their feet to be able to feel where they're at. So they're not so desperate to, to go into this spasm thing. That's, that's how they act. Yeah. I don't know if that's, literally what's happening but well when i had act. my surgery two years ago i had um uh, i had a bone sperm re removed i had the bursa taken out i had the scar cleaned up over my left hip where i had the accident many years ago and they found out that glute medius needed to be reattached it was only attached by 25 percent of the tendon so they put in two screws and stitched up into the tendon and reattached it ouch okay but i couldn't stand on my left leg without holding on until I was washing my pads to fly down to Costa Rica. And I said, well, wonder what would happen if I stood on my physio pad. So I dropped it on the ground and I stepped on it and I could stand without holding on for 15 seconds. And without the pad, I couldn't do it for a second. So I believe that. yeah, it's quite incredible. It, it's, it's uncanny. So like, so you and I had talked about this before. I mean, we know, we know the things that it does we don't know exactly all the science behind why it does it. And this is why like seeing is believing for the people that, that I take these, you know, when I'm trimming and I do this, they're like, they're just like, they're like, how does that work? And I'm like, I'm not really sure. <laughs> it, it, I, I, I think it has to do with the proprioceptors. Uh, cause I try, cause I am a why person. So I have to know the whys. Yeah. And so it would make sense even like for your hip injury when you, 
And like, so I was screwing around with my dog. Like, so we have the physio pad in here. And so I've got like all kinds of like the horse injuries and stuff. And I was screwing around with, with my dog who had shattered his uh, right uh, humerus. And so I was standing on the physio pad and he came right between my legs and he stood and like put his two front feet, like we're standing on it together. And so it just, it's, it's hard to explain exactly how it makes you feel, but when, once you do it, you know that it feels that way. <laughs> Yeah, and and um, you know, we've got more um, veterinarians interested in doing some some research. It's just going to take time. I mean, I think eventually we'll start to get some ideas on what systems it's affecting. Um, yeah. But in the meantime, we know it works, so why not use it? Yeah, exactly. And I've not I seen I've not seen personally for myself, and I know you've done more than me, but I've not seen any horse have anything but positive results, and like during and after. I'm like, it doesn't. Like the, the results remain for quite a while. Yeah. They, there, there are not, a few, not, it's a very small number. Um, um, you know, I've had a couple of horses bronk off the pads, literally, um, but the number is very, very small. So, you know, and you're dealing with horses in general that might have a little bit of discomfort and the, and the horses that have a little discomfort really quickly recognize this thing is gonna make them feel better. Yeah, they do, they do. All right, okay, let me picture let me this side here. So this little guy, this is Lisa Mittler in Texas that she's working on. And I'm like, I, let me see if I can find a picture here. I got a whole picture of his cute little self. Let me see. Let's see if I go. There he is. He he fell out of the back of a truck when he was a baby. Oh, so wait. see his, oh, his oh. right mind. And so um, so he was just he's he's a little short little mini and he fell out and his all of his his right hind and his hip and back are pretty messed up so lisa offered him uh to stand on this this little physio pad and uh i'm like i don't know i tried to download the video let me see i'll have to look and see if i can find the video of him but um he just like trucked off of there with his crooked little leg and he's so happy after he stood on it and he and he chose which ones he wanted to stand on but um she said he he's got quite a bit of discomfort you know, just period because of his accident, but um, not on trim day. <laughs> no, how cute. That's okay. really cute. Yeah, was, yeah, so was, it doesn't matter what size the horse is. The pads are, are not weight dependent. So. Mm -mm, nope. Like the, he loves it as much as the Percheron does. Yeah. And it, like, so this was afterwards. So like his little face and like that kind of says it all. <laughs> oh, wait, we can't see that yet. Oh, oh. There, there. Yeah. He's so yeah. cute. He's like, oh yeah, I'm like, I've got new feet now and I've got like some like relaxation. So he was, he was pretty excited. Yeah. Let me see. So this guy here, this was, um, uh, and if Jackie's watching, she'd probably be crying because like she's, she saved this little guy from a kill lot and he essentially, he had hardly any coffin bones left. So she actually made him, he's a really small guy. And so she actually made him, uh, some, some like type, she calls it redneck formal hoof because we hadn't been to the formal hoof class yet to um, work with Dr. Taylor. But um, so she helped him like support his hooves. And so this is a physio pad. And so they put it in his stall when he like when on his downtime and he had run over he did this on his own there's nothing on him he ran over to stand on that and like he's missing a majority of his coffin bones and one of that one of his coffin bones was actually fused with his extensor tendon wow. so um so it, it was um it was all it was it was not pretty and um and he, he lived a, a happy life with jackie but he just it, his age and his deterioration got to him but um, this is right after that she got him from the kill pen and got his feet under control. And he would like, they just put the physio pad, Jeannie Wright, another one of us that, that the trimmers that like her and Jackie work together a lot. Um, Jeannie loaned her her physio pad and that's little peanut. And so he would go in the stall and find that pad and stand on it on, on his own. <laughs> wow. So These are I, awesome. Um, so before we thing, get too far, I want to make sure that we answer Martina's question. So yes, let's, okay. let's do that now. I, I can read it to you because I have it on my phone. Okay, read it to me. Um, the question is that, I guess the horse has stretched lamina, outward signs, uh, what to do with the pads. Um, also, by the time you see the stretch lamina on the bottom of the foot, it's, it, is it at the point of uh, a past event or still acute? Okay, so, so if you have stretch lamina on the bottom of the foot, I'm like, it can be, it can be, past 
and it can be acute, it depends, because a horse can have chronic laminitis, um, it can have a chronic founder, but acute laminitis. So the stretch lamina on the bottom generally is of, of a past event because the, the hoof is growing down from the cornet band and out from the lamina. So when you have the stretch lamina at the end, it's usually the, at that point in time of which that has grown out that the disconnect has happened from the dermal and the epidermal lamina in the coffin bone. So, um, so for those horses, um, those horses generally, but like every horse is their own choice. Those horses generally like us like about a medium pad, a softer pad. And what feels so good to them is so when horses have the stretch lamina like that, and when, so, so think about our fingernails and our fingernail uh, on our, our, on our uh, fingernail bed. So if we take a hold of our fingernail and pry that away from our fingernail bed, that's what horses with stretch lamina feel like if they have 100% ground contact with that lamina without having, having that hook wall rolled up and, and non-prying. So what is beautifully sweet about the, 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 the surefoot pads is if you put a horse on the surefoot pads, generally they like it, the mediums, but this is everybody's their own individual, so some horses are different. But when you do that, the foot will sink down into that pad and it takes all the pressure off of the lamina and the hoof at that moment in time. And so then it actually, and it gets pressure on the base, fires the proprioceptors. And I would be surprised and we really, I'm like, I don't know if you did this with Dr. Bowker yet, but I'm like, you really need to if you haven't, because he's done all the studies with ultrasound, blood flow and pea gravel. Right. So um, if he, if you could get him, like it'd be super cool is to do, um, him doing an ultrasound with blood flow on different densities of the surefoot pads. He has the pad, so we might be able to get that done. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like and so, so as long as we, our shelter in place doesn't get too crazy in July, he's going to come and talk with us in, at our July advanced professionals class. Our May oh, awesome. advanced professionals class got canceled because um, of the shelter in place. But you might have July, you Dr. Bowker. tell me when that is. <laughs> What's that? You'll have to tell me when that is. If it happens, I like, you have to let me know. Yeah, you you know, I'm like you know when. It, I'm like I sent you the dates because you're okay. gonna. I think that you're try to come, but like what we're trying to gonna do before all this stuff, all of our cancellations, and what we're gonna get to do when we get like loose, like who knows? But but um, so the can is is Mart if you hear me, Martina, to whether or not that answered the question. And hi, by the way. <laughs> Martina raised your hand. So let's see if uh, I'm just going to let Martina, you can go ahead and ask, ask. I think I unmuted you. Unmute. Okay. All right. Uh, yes, it did. Thank you so much. Great. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, wow. Wonder of technology. Hi from Arizona. Uh, yes, perfect. It helped me a lot with that horse that I'm dealing with here. Thank you. Great. Awesome. All right. So was that the one that you brought to Arizona? Uh, no, 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 no. It's a, it's a, a friend of mine's horse, uh, um, a very acute laminitis, uh, x-rays were taken. I mean, it's just a, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but not the one you see, not Biscuit. Biscuit okay, is good. Good. I was like, Okay, good. And I'm like, I was worried when you, like, because Wendy gave, sent me the question. I'm like, oh, no. But um, oh. so the horses, are, like, the, the, the acute laminitic horses like that, I'm like, they're really cool about telling you. And so a lot of it has to do with the involvement of how inflamed the flexor tendon is and all that. So if the, if the flexor tendon is inflamed, those horses more than likely like the a little bit of a wedge, but if it's um, if it's just like uh, perimeter where the whole perimeter of the lamina is inflamed, they, they'll like the soft medium pad. But depending yeah, and, on um, that kind of fits with what I remember Daisy saying that if the if the pain is on the wall, soft, and if it's in the center of the foot, hard. Yes, and then along with that is so so. Um, cases had to do with um, the just the DDFT and they they didn't really consider like in the old days about uh, the lamina what's happening with the lamina and the, the disconnect between the bone and the wall but so there are some times though that the DDFT becomes um, becomes irritated and inflamed because of the situation going on and those horses that's why back in the olden days everybody wedged up the foundered horses in the back rather than just trying to realign the capsule 
but um, but there are a handful of cases that that temporarily until things settle down, they they want a little bit of a wedge because it takes the tension out of the, the flexor tendon. It actually helps them get more comfortable for the moment. And the horses, they never lie. That's the cool part though. So right. um, a handful of those horses will prefer a wedge over just a flat, flat surface pad. Right. Okay. Uh, go. Let's have another picture. Okay, let me see. I think that was the end of that that file there. So let me get out of there and I got Okay, more. so while you're looking like, for another file, I have a question here I think I can answer. Uh, Christine is asking, do draft horses generally prefer a different hardness than minis? I own a large draft, 1,900 pounds, and take care of small minis, the height of my dog. One mini is crooked like the one you posted. They're all seniors, and I was thinking a draft would prefer firmer pads because of the weight. So basically, Christine, at that weight, you want hard pads. Um, they're just, they're going to kind of go through the firm pads. And um, so if you stick with the hard pads and or the physio pad, because you can use, as we've seen, the physio pad with your, with your mm -hmm. um, minis. But with your big draft horses, I think you really need to invest in a pair of hard pads just because of, at 1,900 pounds, um, that's the place to start. I had somebody actually, she got firm pads and she had a couple of really big horses like that. And she said it didn't work. And I, I was like, when she told me she had firm, I was like, oh, I think you need hard. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, it's not weight dependent until you get to that extreme on the high yes. side. On the low side, it doesn't matter. All right, we're okay. seeing your dogs. Okay, I'm, it's because I, the rest of this stuff, let me see if I can get this. Because I think I, this, yeah, so I think this is a little video of the guy. Oh, yeah. That, um, I think it's a video, but maybe not. So it's a, just a close-up, I guess, of the little guy. I thought it was a video. Yeah, and this is where you can see that on the physio pad, these little guys, and we've actually had a, um, not a whip at the Italian Greyhound on a physio pad, and he left prints. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's on the Surepaws page on Facebook. It's on the, it's the so cover cool. page. Yeah. So I don't know if you've taught this before, and like this is just a nerdy thing. So I'm like it's cool that we like we like get the prints. But like if you get the if the pads are a little bit cold, and then you do that, and like you, your prints will stay a little bit longer. I don't know if anybody's did that. Yep. Oh, and um, so I did a little experiment the other day. I have a um, Joyce's horse has had a touch of laminitis, and she, um, she's been her mom is is about to pass, and so she's been rather distracted. So I just, after listening to Bob and you and everybody, I was like, well, all right, I'm going to pull out my rasp because I do my own horse anyway and see if I can help this horse. Um, but what I wanted to do, because Bob talked about having a ruler. So I grabbed a ruler and I measured the, I put it on the foot and then I had the horse stand on all four feet on hard pads. And when it stepped off, um, Brad took the ruler and measured the prints and we got the same measurement. So, you know, if you can't measure the foot because the horse can't stand, let you hold the leg long enough, you can put the foot on a pad, yes. let it stay long enough on the pad to get the print. And then you just have to realize that there's a deformity from where the pad starts to come down to where the load is. So you just, where you choose to measure to, you gotta just look at the foot and look at the pad and you'll see what where the edge of the hoof wall is and that's where you wanna measure to. But I, I was like, really curious and, and really kind of pleased that, that that works out. That's awesome. Like we, we mess around all the time with um, the prints on the pads and like if we do this, what happens with that and how they weight it. So that's awesome. That's yeah. like, it's very connected. Okay, so let me get out of there and I'm gonna go back here. So these next ones that I'm gonna be, this is Tina Thomas that um in uh texas and she's so this is a this is a pms pssm horse so that's um pssm is polysaccharide storage myopathy it's a muscle problem uh, of feeding the muscles and so um this is a video so she says you can see the muscles in his shoulders twitching as he sways side to side and he's way way more relaxed after the session so when you look at this let me see i'll hit play yeah, hit play and we'll see if we can see it. So, okay. um, yeah, I'm well, it's actually going to be in slow motion, which is kind of cool. So it wasn't a long clip, but you could kind of get to see. So, so it helps relax the muscles so that the PSSM horses, sometimes they'll have a hard time when we're trying to trim them because their muscles get so rigid and um, it's really a quick thing. And they're not trying to be bad, but they just, they can't, 
they, they just can't do what we want them to do. And Tina's had great luck with this guy with the PSSM being able to relax his muscles and um, just go and, and be, be calm and quiet. Really cool. So uh, this is another one right here, I think. And this is the, this is the horse with the PSSM. And um, his muscles, so this is what she said about him. That, uh, okay, right now we're looking This is stop. a combination. Oh, it should be back. Is it back? Coming slowly. Okay. There's a little bit of a delay. There we go. Yep. Just scroll okay. down a little because all we can see is his ears. Okay. So let me read this to you guys first. It's like, this is the horse. Like, this is the combination he chose. His muscles get really tight and he's able to completely relax when he's standing on the pad. So let me put him up here. So look at his face first. Like, yeah. this is, like he is like chilling. He's like, okay. And this is the kind, this is how, what he chose. Like, and we always give them the choice of what they want to do. And those, the, so, and some people might look at that and think, oh, he fell off the pad in the back. Not so much. Like he, like they'll put just the part of the foot that they want on it. And so just because in the beginning, when they did that, I was one of those people, oh, he fell off the pad in the back. So I re-offered it to him again, put him, put, got the foot on it and everything was good. And like it was, I never got away from the foot for less than two seconds. And he's like, that's not what I wanted. And he'll, he'll do the exact same thing again. Yep. And Ada's little got a little so, tiny bit on that back foot, on the medial yep. side of the foot. It's just where he needs it to feel a certain way. And the horses never lie. So, it's, so you can, like I said, I thought that in the beginning too. I'm like, oh yeah, he just fell off of the pad. Well, Ada's horse that has the upward fixation of the patella. I'm like, I was certain that she'd want to have her wedge pad underneath the bad stifle. But when I did that, she kicked it out. And then by no accident, she put, she, she backed up and put her opposite leg on it. Yeah. So they, they don't do that by accident. No, no. And you know, some people, when they see the horse kind of kick the pad back, they think, oh, he doesn't like the pads. It's, a lot of times they're actually kicking it to the back foot. Yes. Yes. And sometimes I'm like, they just want to tell you like, Hey, like, I like the pad, but not, not there. <laughs> right. We're not that long. <laughs> So, okay, let me go, like, so I got some, quite a few of Tina. Tina, uh, everybody's doing a lot with these, so I'm like, no, I can't. it's really impressive. Better, but so we've she, had a question like about on a horse with a high-low syndrome. Do you have any pictures of a horse with a high-low um, syndrome? I didn't put any in the files today. I can get some, though, because uh, uh, Natalie Zelinsky in Wisconsin, um, she's, like, got some pictures like that. I was going through, I was trying to, like, make sure I didn't, I could, put lots of pictures in and then we'd be like way over and all that stuff. So I'm like, well, we just gotta, but I, I do. And then they like that. And so as this is as a rule, but I'm like, every horse is different. Um, oftentimes they'll put their high foot They'll Like you'll offer them the whole pad, but oftentimes they'll put just part of their foot on that pad, usually the heel. And so that actually relieves their flexor tendon. But the second that I think that that's what they're going to want to do, then they don't want to do that at all. <laughs> And you can use the slants. You can use the hard slants and you can have one heel high and one um, toe yep. high um, or switch it around. And, and the slants are really handy that way for the high-low horses because you can mimic what they're already doing and give them support in that direction. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. I was trimming a dressage horse uh, last year and, um, and there was nothing wrong with him, but he was doing some, he was, he's a, he's a low level dressage and he's doing more eventing than he is dressage. And he's, he's got ever, ever so slightly high low. And so, um, his higher foot is his right foot and it's really slight. And like to somebody that wasn't looking for it probably wouldn't notice it because it's that slight, but he definitely has a favorite side that he works on. And He's like, and I don't have his pictures right up here, but I'm like, I sh I'll, I'll, get, I'll see if I can get a picture up of him in a bit. But um, I was working on him after he had, he went and uh, won a bunch of his shows over the weekend and he came back and he was not sore, sore, but for me, I'm like, I could, like, cause when I trim them, I'm like, their muscles are against mine and I can feel how that they feel. So what I ended up doing, I'm like, he, he chose this by offering the pads and whatnot. So what he actually chose in the end was to put his right front on the, the hard pad and his left hind on the hard pad with just a little bit of angle off. And he stood there and like, you could just see his whole body go to butter. And that was just after, I mean, he was pretty, he was pretty tense. Um, this, he had worked hard. He wasn't sore, but he had had, a, he had, he's an athlete and he had a, a big athletic weekend. 
And so it was amazing what he chose to do. And he's, he's ever so slight high low, but high low horses oftentimes have a diagonal, their diagonals will be a little bit offset as well. And sometimes, um, sometimes I'll, I will balance them like that because their limbs help one another out when they're doing diagonal movements. Right. So, um, so this is again, this is Tina's, this is her horse name is Charlie. She said he had lameness in his shoulder. She tried him on the physio pad, but as he, as like you can see, my I preferred the medium pads. Immediately, he went into the surefoot trance, and um, he has less body soreness the following week. The following week, even after standing on the pad for about ten minutes. So, so here he is. Like she offered these to him, and so see the one, the picture on the left. She offered him the physio first, and he's like, "Yeah, that's okay, but how about that medium pad?" <laughs> and so, so right I now, I'm back ordering his... medium pads, and I noticed that you talk about them a lot. So, um, I'm I'm hoping to have a shipment next week of medium pads. <laughs> Awesome. I would I would have to say it. I'd have, I'd have to ask all my peeps. So, physio pads, my like, and I all of them is great. But my for what we end up using the most of, and and what we do, the physio pads would be the number one thing. Um, uh, medium pads and then the slant slant mediums are. Um, Hard we slant use all of pink? them. But, huh? The pink. Slants? Um. No. The I'm like so the yellow slants. Yellow like, slants. Firm slants. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I've been saying the wrong thing all along. So it's okay. No, it's the firm now the name is actually in the little print of the Surefoot logo on the pad. It says what it is now. I know, and you think yeah, I have that memorized by now? <laughs> sorry. It's okay. No worries. But um, so you like, and this is what when you guys when you're looking at the horses, this is what when when they say that they'll tell us, um, like they do. So the picture on the left, he's not complaining about that physiopan. It's just that he's like, yeah, that's nice. And then when he gets the medium one, he's like, oh, that's, that's the spot. So that's, that's for his shoulder. And let me see this, this one. This is another one from uh, Tina. So this is a laminitic mare that she put one pad, uh, one hoof on the pad and she immediately put the other foot on because uh, then she went into her happy place for about 10 minutes. She was very relaxed. This was her, uh, this was, uh, this mare and Tina's first trim together and she chose to do this. We're just and, waiting for it to, to roll down. We just see her ears right now. I'm sorry. Uh, like okay. I forget about, I'm, our internet's so slow anyway. Yeah, it is, it's, there you go. Now we see her, her nose and her feet. Before we saw her, <laughs> this is her face. So like she's got the relaxed face on, and then so this is this is her chilling with her feet. She chose that. Yeah. And that was her and Tina's first trim together. So, so, um, you guys tell me how many horses like when you, that's their first experience with the the trimmer. What do you think they're gonna do? Look forward to them or dread them? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's really, and you know, that's the whole reason we came up with that physio pad. And that was like, you know, what Jeff was saying is we wanted to make horses more comfortable so that we made everybody safer. And that yeah. was our, our goal. And, you know, like, it's so fabulous to see these pictures because it looks like we're spot on. And I'm just so excited about that because, you know, it's, it's a hard enough job as it is. And when a horse is uncomfortable, you can't just explain them, look, it'll only be a couple minutes and it'll all be over. You yes. know, they're like, I can't do this now. And so if we can make them feel better in that moment, just like that, that is really so, um, it, it's what keeps me going. <laughs> I, I hear you. I'm like, like, the the all the all the all the uh, trimmers that came to the practitioners class and like they also uh, they're all saying the same thing, so yeah. it's awesome. So real quick because I don't know how if our time is getting close, but I want I'm going to put a um, a list up here of all the practitioners that um, that came to the the class and these guys are either students of mine or graduates, but these are the guys that and so I'm gonna I'll scroll it. And I think you're recording it too. So for yeah. the and I'm pretty sure right. we've got all their names listed right now. So right now, um, you can find all this information on the Murdoch Method page, uh, homepage. If you go to the Surefoot Equine tab and then scroll down, that talks about Surefoot practitioners, and you should be able to see all these folks on that list. Um, we are going to be launching the Surefoot Equine website. I'm I'm uh, hoping it's this 
fir the May 1st this Friday. Um, I'm, I'm not sure yet that it's actually gonna go live. If it does go live, it might take us a little while to get it really up to speed. Um, but that's one of the things I've gotta get to a hold of all your, all your peeps because I need a photograph with a bio to go on our new website. Okay, cool. Yep. So like, like, so some of them might be listening or like, if they're not listening now, they'll, um, they'll catch on YouTube. They'll and catch then it up. I'll, I'll yep. send out a, that's what I always have to do. Unfortunately is catch up your stuff on the YouTube. That's why That's why it's there because not everybody could do it at a time. And Oh, by the way, this week we were supposed to be this past weekend at the Land Rover three day event, um, with a booth for Surefoot. And so since that didn't happen this week, I'm offering a 10% off coupon for anybody who wants to go and purchase some Surefoot pads, the coupon code is LRK3DE. So Land Rover Kentucky three day event, LRK3DE. You get 10% off your purchases. Um, and that is until Friday, till the first, um, well, through the first. And, um, and this list, like I said, is up. And once again, Ida, we have just blown through an hour. It feels like five minutes. I know it's crazy. I'm going to hit stop share here so that yep. like, okay, there we go. And it, you know, it's just been great to talk to you and I'm so excited to see, you know, sharing, uh, you know, what your practitioners are up to and how they're using Surefoot and to see some of these really incredible cases because, you know, the horses that come to me are typically rideable horses. Um, I'm not usually seeing ones that, that have, you know, some of the difficulties that the horses you guys are seeing. So that's really, really fascinating. And I really appreciate um, you sharing that with us tonight. Well, thank you. I'm like, it's, Eric, it's, it's been a big help to all of us. We love it. Yep. And of course, we're continuing to work on development all the time. I'm, I'm always looking to see what we can do to make things better or easier, or if there's another direction. So we're working on things for, um, for x-ray blocks with physio pads and, um, and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that research as we explore and see how that helps horses. And um, in the meantime, thank you all for joining us. It's been another fabulous webinar. You can find all the recorded webinars on the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel. And I, you know, well, it's just always so much fun to talk to you for an hour. Oh, back at you, girl. Like it, we're just like, I, I, an hour seems like five minutes, doesn't it? It does. It goes by so fast. But, uh, That's what I think too. Thanks so much. And everybody stay safe and uh, be well. And soon we'll see each other in person. I'm sure we will. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.